everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Elena and I have cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic condition and that's what my channel's all about. I make videos talking about CF and what it's like to live with. I have Instagram, I have a Depop, it's at gingerelles, the same as my channel, so please go follow me over there if you fancy. Also, please like and subscribe and comment and all that good stuff if you like too, as that'll be fab. And I'll get on into the video. So, if this goes to plan, this video should be kind of documenting my trip up to London Hospital, which I'm going on tomorrow. I'm really like, really nervous about it. For anyone else who's been shielding or quarantining, I'm sure you might be able to relate that when you do go out and you do kind of go back to normal life, it's really daunting and quite scary. The idea of traveling like for a couple of hours in the car for a distance other than like 10 minutes up the road really is like stressing me out. Also, if you have anxiety, you'll understand too because like traveling in general can be quite stressful. So I'm just a little bit apprehensive for that. But anyway, I should probably tell you why I'm actually going up to London Hospital. So I live in Eastbourne. My clinic that I always go to is in London at the Brompton which is in sort of like the Chelsea Kensington sort of area it's really nice up there but I've been in a bit of a pickle the past couple of weeks and we haven't really been sure what's going on so they thought the best thing to do was to see me so just to summarize why I went up to the hospital um I'd been feeling very dizzy very dehydrated very fatigued I had increased levels of thirstiness I just wasn't feeling myself basically so both me and the doctors were thinking that perhaps it was either going to be me starting to develop CF related diabetes or that maybe I had adrenal insufficiency because I've been on steroids now for a couple of years and that just can happen when you've been on steroids for a long time I'm going to be kind of documenting my traveling experience because I'm very lucky that the hospital in London actually have transport that can pick me up from Eastbourne and take me all the way to London, which is great because that was my first concern was, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get there? Because usually I get driven to the train station, I get a, tra a, tra 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 I get a train, then I usually have to change and then I get another train and then I have to walk to the underground and then go on the underground and then walk to the hospital and all of the people in between that are gonna come into contact with like, not a good idea, no, 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 no. But they were like, chill, don't worry, we can come pick you up. So I was like, amazing, door to door service. But they were very, very nice in saying that I could bring my mum with me so that I didn't find the journey quite so anxiety provoking. <laughs> and hopefully I will finally get whatever's going on sorted. I've managed to put the tiniest bit of makeup on. It is currently eight o'clock, the earliest I've been up probably in the last five months. Um, and we're just waiting for the car to get here. I'm not feeling too bad. I'm just gonna hide my chins. Um, hopefully everything gets sorted and I'll let you know how it goes.
Hello everybody, it is currently quarter to seven, I just got home, I've been out since 10 to 8 this morning, I'm an actual normal human being who got up before 12.30, incredible. So everyone's favourite segment of the video, it's now hospital hall time. Yeah. So today's trip was fairly meh, successful, I'd give the journey up a solid 8.5 out of 10, no anxiety, no panic attacks. It was lovely. I'd give the general hospital vibe a solid five out of 10. It was pretty pants, but that's okay. In terms of coronavirus panic, I would give that a solid nine out of 10. In terms of nine being very calm atmosphere, everyone was wearing face masks, everyone was washing hands. It was super great. As you can probably tell, I'm just like buzzing to be home. But it was also very nice just leaving the house and like actually going somewhere else and seeing people. So that was cool. Anyway, back to hospital hall. So here we have my coronavirus symptom screening questionnaire. And if I answered yes to any of these questions, then it would be a big fat no and I'd be sent home. One of them, have you been feeling more tired than usual? Absolutely bloody lootly. But that's been probably to do with whatever's going on. So. We then have four Nouveau Air mouthpieces. So these are what I use to go and test my lung function. So there we go. And finally, but most excitingly, a Fitbit. If this is an incentive to have CF, free tech. The CF team at my hospital to help people stay healthy and to monitor their condition during quarantine are giving out Fitbits and a Fitbit Area 2 smart scale. So all of that data from my lung function device, the scales and the Fitbit, all of the data from that is going to be able to sync to a new CF app and then my consultants and my CF team can see it and see my progress, which is amazing. So yeah. So at this point, you may be wondering, uh, Elena, why did you give the hospital a 5 out of 10 rating? That is honestly just a bit scandalous. Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so myself and mum had been travelling up to the hospital after a couple of hours. The journey was pretty good. I was still obviously a little bit nervous to go up because this was the first time I'd been to hospital in months and months. So I hadn't eaten very much, which is important because it meant that I was a bit spaced out when we got to the hospital. So to have my adrenal insufficiency test carried out, I needed a cannula so that I could be given an IV, see my reaction to it and determine whether I had adrenal insufficiency or not. So the nurse came in to cannulate me and the kerfuffle ensued from there. <laughs> So lovely nurse, number one, found a vein very easily, cannulated me fine, worked like a dream, we love. I had the band strapped to my arm, um, the tourniquet, not to be confused with the word tarpaulin, I always go to call it a tarpaulin, that is definitely the wrong word. <laughs> But that was obviously constricting my arm so that she could find the vein easier. Fine. Then along comes stupid nurse number two, we shall call him. He was trying to help her get the tourniquet off because obviously they both have gloves on. They have the stormtrooper visors on because of COVID. So it's a bit tricky for her to get it off. He tries to yank it off. He yanks it off and he knocks the cannula out. I see it happen in slow motion, the cannula flies out, the blood starts spurting everywhere. <laughs> Literally all over me, all over my arm, all over the pillow. It was a mess. And the nurse just goes, oh, sorry. Oh, and I was like, it's fine. <laughs> So yes, the general experience was not amazing. I felt so sorry for the poor lovely nurse number one because she kept profusely apologising, but obviously it was not her fault. And to put the cherry on top of quite an exhausting cake of a day, <laughs> 
I spoke to a doctor who basically told me the biggest component of my symptoms, my physical symptoms, was going to be caused by my anxiety. And we can all imagine how well that went down. Not well. Um, (laughs) I was very proud of myself that I didn't actually rip her head off because trust me, I felt like it. It's just very frustrating when you feel like you're not being listened to, your judgment's being questioned and you feel like your physical symptoms are just being blamed almost on mental illness. Not that mental illness isn't a big enough deal as it is, but it's frustrating when you feel like they're just using that almost as an excuse for why you're feeling the way you do. That's as far as I'm going to go into it in today's video as I'm actually filming currently a video all about when doctors don't believe you, when you feel like your symptoms are being potentially blamed on mental illness and just how that makes you feel and why that's not okay. But despite all that, I did actually really enjoy just being properly out of the house, even if the whole hospital kerfuffle wasn't the nicest. I just appreciated being out and not stuck indoors. But anyway, um, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a bit of a mix match. We had a bit of a vlog, a bit of a haul in there. And I really enjoyed making it, actually. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.